Hello there. <coughs> Welcome to Radio FM 88 Australia. We're broadcasting from Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. And it's our Thursday show, in which case um, our co-host Dan Dreamer is sitting up there in the UK. Yeah. And um, <laughs> there you go, she's right at the top of the pole. So um, our guest is in the middle there. And if you're watching um, on YouTube or Facebook, you can see who our guest is. But I'll allow um, Andrina to do that. And it's um, it's a good evening here. It's a good morning to you. Well, welcome everybody to Dream in the New Dream. And if you're new, um, an extra special welcome. And hello to all our oldies. Um, today is the 27th of October and next week's show from the UK will be coming at 9am instead of 10am so um, but anyway just to give you a reminder that that will be on the flyer um, today it's great pleasure to have Wanda Shipton on the show and I met Wanda oh gosh many 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 years ago uh, when I landed in Australia and um, she's always I've been a admirer of her work, but I've not seen her over the years. So it's with great pleasure that I welcome you to the show today. And you're going to show us all your beautiful channeled artwork and guides and uh, different pictures that you've done over the years. So without further ado, um, also, you were born with a pencil in your mouth rather than a spoon. <laughs> hey? <laughs> I That's probably true. Sure. Yeah, your dad was an artist, so you've been drawing from tiny. So would you love to share how you started in life and where you started to what has brought you to this show today? Oh, thank you very much, Andrea, and thank you for inviting me as well. Um, look, um, I was born in England. I was born in Liverpool. So, And um, uh, in England, uh, I remember being a very, very small child. And my mother said I always had a pencil in my hand drawing. And my father used to help me because he was an artist as well. He was a musician, an artist, a scientist. And so he used to help me and um, or just take inches. That's all it was. And I, I remember when I was must have been five years old in this beautiful, great big house. And he was teaching me how to... Uh, draw perspective. I couldn't work out how to get the the buildings looking like they were going into the background. So he showed me how to do that. And uh, but also at the time, Andrea, I had a lot of experiences with spirits and guides. Uh, uh, I used to see things, um, and I used to tell my mother there was a uh, there was someone in my my room last night, and you know things like that. This is up to the age I was uh, six years old. Then we left that house, but uh, in this great big beautiful house that we had, and um, I remember as a child, um, I must have been under two, because my mother said I uh, was two years old when I left the cot, and I remember even to this day floating above. The, the cot um, and I remember it was like a gold light and I was rocking from head to toe and uh, I could hear the sound of the light and uh, I had lots of experiences where I'd go to a di different place in my in the house because we had five five landings there and I used to sit there and just uh, I used to go at particular times of the day and sit in a particular place on the landing and I used to feel a vibration. I just go there to feel that vibration. It's just amazing. And I went to school and forgot all about it. And because uh, later on in life, I, I sort of have those experiences as well. I see spirit and feel different vibrations and energy. And that's why I went into healing. But even with my art, my art coincided with a lot of this. And I, I would, continue drawing even through uh you know i'm talking about england after the war you know and um uh, i used to draw whether i was happy or sad or confused or whatever and i feel that the draw drawing itself and coloring in and paint mm. were part of the healing process um, and helped me uh, to have an identity in some way mm. and yeah, and, and again, I, I think because my father helped me, it, it does make so much of a difference when a parent helps a child uh, in, in whatever their gifts are. So I went to school and um, I remember at school also, um, 
when the teacher was talking, I used to draw. It was an automatic thing. I had a pencil in my hand drawing all the time. And I, I remember when I was 14, I drew a picture. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I drew a picture of Jesus. And he was in the lap of Mary. And, of, uh, and of course, Jesus didn't, it was, he was just taken down from the cross. And he had a, a, like a cloth over him. And the nuns got really upset and said, he's naked, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I, I just saw him, you know, I don't know why I drew. But so some of these things um, that I drew were meaningful, which without me understanding why. And then I was drawing things for the children in my class. So they asked me to draw things for them. And I drew animals and dogs and cats and people. And... Um, and the nuns got me to draw, uh, take the art lesson, had to sh show people how to shade things when I was about 14. So, because right. the nuns don't know us. So, so, a lot of these things were at the beginning of it. And then I started to draw faces, and people say, Well, who is it? And I said, I don't know. And eventually, it came about that what I was drawing was actually uh, one of someone's guide. And she said to me, you've just drawn a picture of my guide. And I thought, okay. Uh, so I realised the relevance of what I was doing. And so uh, that's how it started. But I also had great deep um, inspiration and love, spirit and energies. And I knew there's so much more in life and that we are so powerful and we just don't realise it. And a part of what I wanted to do is to show people that they too can do this and to empower people, to, to help them to break down barriers within themselves. Um, if we can do something that we think we can't do, it, it's a elation. It helps us to open up not just to do with the art, but to do with their life, uh, with moving through challenges and lots of things. So I was very interested in learning about spirit when I was, you know, at school when I was about 16, I wanted to go to university and learn about spirit because in those days they didn't have that. So I, I did um, psychology and I'm glad I did psychology. Psychology is it was great and I learned about um, uh, uh, encounter group work, uh, working with energy that our professor worked with energy. He had a a lesson called consciousness which is just amazing i think it's amazing and i learned a lot from working with him and so that also opened up lots of door, doors for me as well and it, it may meant that all the things i was ex experiencing had some type of correlation that they were coming together if you like and um so i started to work in many different ways like that i, I did dance therapy um, uh, using colours and movement and uh, sound uh, as well. So at, at university, so I took classes in those things. So colour is so important and for us, even like there was a lot of colours I couldn't wear, by the way. Uh, I was very shy, very sensitive, and I never wore red. And uh, I did an encounter group where I started to work with red energy. And it was important for me to work with the red energy because it's grounding. It's helping me to be on the planet, on the earth, uh, to come from my own power. And because I came feet first into the earth. So <laughs> I was premature, I came feet first. So I think I must have been a star being or something and trying to land here on earth and making sure I was got here. So uh yeah so th that was really interesting the colors that i've worked through in my life like when i was five my favorite color was blue and yellow uh yellow of the sun uh blue of the sky and it, it's actually natural for children to have those two colors but i love those colors together uh, then later on i as i was about 17 no no 14 i went into purple uh, and then other colours came through, blue, and then later on in life I had lime green and yellows and reds and oranges. And and when I'm painting these 
pictures um, and putting the colour in there, it's actually helping me as well. Mm. I am working with that energy. And I've gone from doing um, spiritual things like blues and purples and, you know, uh, and then um, like big paintings. Then I go into doing more earthy tones uh, like native american indian stuff i've done a lot of that on natural skins and uh so i i need the balance of both of these different energies and i go from one to the other so i've probably painted every single day of my life or drawn so i do it all the time you know even today what did i do today oh yes i've got a painting there on working on at the moment so and i've just finished two portraits i've done portrait painting for people as well so yeah so each one of these you're seeing now are my cards uh from my goddess within cards because i believe every every single person has uh, a, a unique energy but we all have that goddess empowerment within ourselves, and uh th th these we can relate to different goddesses uh, at different times, like different archetypes, different aspects of ourselves that we can uh, encourage to bring out a bit stronger as well. So as I'm drawing these and painting them, uh, I'm integrating myself. I'm working with my own inner soul, my own spirituality, my own psyche. So, um, and so by people working with them as well, of course, that would help them uh, to work with their uh, inner self as well mm. so because you know we're always told what things we can't do if we do something wrong we're told what we can't do you know yeah. we're not really i mean i i must admit i try to do the, with that with my children i try to tell them that they did good things but a lot of the time i just tell them they were doing something wrong so and usually people would tell us when we're not doing it right so by doing this it means that for me uh, teaching people how to draw means that they are learning about their own power within themselves so that they can um, realize that they have potentials and gifts that they can release maybe not always in the painting could be in something else but this opens the door towards that mm. so yeah. this this is a wimba she's a um you can see she's got the owl that is there and the owl represents a particular energy you know to do it with, with wisdom because um uh you've got the greek goddess um athena she loved the owl as well but also owl sees at night and it depends where the owl is in the picture where it's flying what part of the picture is in it all represents something different so in this picture here the owl is on the bottom it's actually flying so it's not a, um it's not contained it, it's free it's mm. free and it's working if you see it's working with her throat chakra and um so uh, this is representing that particular energy so when i'm drawing a guide drawing for someone um uh i start off with a scribble and i teach people how to do this in my workshops it, it's like you know when you're looking at the sky you see all these clouds and you can see faces in the clouds. I think that, um, uh, you know, or, or you go to the bathroom and you look at the tiles, you see pictures and faces in, in, the, in the tiles of the bathroom. Or the shower oh, curtain. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. by doing this, it means that we're working with our subconscious or soul level. We're actually uh, acknowledging something down within ourselves. We haven't thought about it. A lot of our problem is in our culture, we think too much. So we're coming from more of the uh, left side of the brain, if you like. And uh, intuition helps a person to work with their right side of the brain, their creative side of themselves as well. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, so each, each painting represents something different. So uh, when it starts off with a the scribble, then you can see a face coming through and i bring the face out so it's not coming from my thought processes rather from my intuitive process mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm helping people to see that within themselves that they can do that so something like the painting i was seeing of what that you did before and that the 
a bit um the spiral energy you know so and if you had a look at um jeff's one too the one that yeah, he did amazing. Like, it, 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 amazing you know so what what um do you use paints or are these chalk pastels what do you well, work well, well the, the the ones i do at the workshop are pastels they're called um chalk pastels meaning they're not oil pastels uh, I just find that the easier to work with uh, paint. You've got water, and you have to let it dry. Look, so this is amazing. This, look at this. Now he's got um, a lot of different energies. You can see different. He he just brought these out because I I watched him as it, it progressed. That um, it started off with with these um, uh, dolphins at the bottom. I don't. Is that dolphin right at the bottom there, Jeff? And there was a two birds. It's very small that I'm looking at, but there's two birds on the top of the head, mm. and it's also got that beautiful third eye spiral. To me, it looks like a diamond. So it's like uh, diamonds are also to do with <laughs> empowerment, but very crystal clear as well. So it means clarity, and the birds are enhancing that energy. The bird is connecting with that third eye you can see that you know the two birds you've got another bird looking down and the other one is closer to it so those two birds are connecting so there's there's something about perhaps two energies coming together um and uh which will be in the line of a, a higher higher self or maybe a, a project of, of a, something that is coming into being as well so, and even the colour, you can see the beautiful deep blue colours that he's got there. Yeah, um, because working with the voice, each note relates to a colour. So that yeah. there, like what I'm wearing, is the colour of Sagittarius. And I know Jeff is a Sagittarius as well, which is interesting. Well, that is interesting. Yes, I didn't know he was a Sagittarius. But it, it is beautiful... Um, uh, blues and it, it's also connecting you can see it's connecting with the throat chakra at the same time as well the blue color that's there so um it's sound and a color are all vibrations that, that's all we are we're just you know a, a conglomerate of, of vibrations and energies and uh it's the way that we conduct ourselves, the way that we think can influence our, our healing, our physical body, our mind. Uh, it can also influence where we're going in life, or what we manifest, what we create as well. So the, the more that, and oh, this is, yeah, this is the group that we were, um, just completed. And um, so the, the, you can see a smile on those people's faces, which I love. Mm. So people leave it and they're very, very happy. But when they go, when they first start, they're saying, I can't draw. I'm not an artist. I can't do it. And um, it's great to see that they've moved past a particular challenge to do this. And each one of them has a particular energy. They've they talked about what energies that these people, um, beings that came through, what they met, and how they've got different symbols on them that represent that they know what they're about as well. So that's why I enjoy doing the workshops. Mm. But even if I draw a a guide for a person um i i when i draw it uh, and i it's not painted it is done in pastel and the, the different symbols what happens in the, the the drawing itself the color uh sometimes it could be an animal uh or a symbol of some kind i start to, to work with it and tell them what that means now this one here is is of course the the wolf energy uh, paint on a lot of drums and um it's snow in the background but although he's dark so uh this is more like a symbol of the moon as well it's the moon energy which is a the psychic feminine energy so everything every single thing in our life has energy and it's, it's symbolic everything if we if we really want to look at it so it's just listening to these and this is the, the white wolf again it's an indian chief that's there and um how close the wolf is to him it connects with him very strongly and uh, um so
so he, he's got the dark and light but also golden energy golden energy is to do with transformation and change so he has a lot of uh, anyone that is drawn to something like this, they either connect with the, the native energies, with the wolf, but also to do with change in their life at the same time. Uh, and we, we've got we've got quite a few different native energies. This is a, a big painting that I have. Uh, that is a painting, not a not a um, pastel drawing. So, and again, it's called an uh, eagle heart. The eagle is right across his heart. And it's protecting his heart. It, it's also um, the eagle has its wings ready to fly, which means he's open uh, in his heart level. So people who choose this type of painting, it, that's part of their psyche as well, part of their soul energy. Mm. So, yeah. Again, this is a, uh, yeah. So this is actually a shield. And it's done on like a leathery uh, leather material um, and in a circle. And this is a warrior, works with the wolf energy, the eagle energy, and he also has his shield as well, a dream catcher. So very much connecting with, with the dream energy. Uh, and he had the, the um, staff, it's like saying he's to do with protection as well mm. like a warrior's protecting energies so I, I actually have given that to someone that is someone has bought that one um yeah so that's sold that one uh this is a star being i love i love the the beings you know she's from the pleiades and i really connect with the star beings always have as a child i used to call them moon men and i used to see them at on my at my window when i was in england like but these were like circles and I, I just call them moon moon men and she's from the pleiades energy and again she, her hair is made of light she's a light energy and coming from the heart she comes from an innocent um child type of energy so uh, it's just totally open and uh, and i do work with the inner child as well in some of my workshops so uh, but I, I, I'm going to do a workshop to do with all the beautiful star beings from different constellations as well. Mm. I always loved astronomy too. Mm. This is another one. Yeah, so again, this is more... Sometimes these beings, some beings like this, uh, um, I, I, see him as, I, th I see him as a male, this particular one. I have an, a female one as well. Uh, but you can see that the, the top of his head sort of uh, rounded and also a lot of light. And again, it's to do with communication, to do with the throat chakra. Um, more to do with analytical things. Uh, um, I wouldn't say he was from Sirius. I don't know exactly where he's from. But I also connect with the Syrian energy because of um, uh, I love that the thought processes and also Egypt. Egypt's almost like my home. And uh, I don't know if where he belongs, this particular one. But there is another one. Yeah, the, the, now these are Pleiadian energies as well. These are the sisters. And they both connect with each other as well. It's new communication. And because um, in the Pleiades, there are seven sisters, of course. We all know that. And uh, there's a big radiant of light from the third eye of energy and love. Uh, to the earth and working with sensitivity and, and light, uh, color, uh, sound as well. I love sound. Uh, be nice if, if if you could, you know, if you could have sound with them. But anyway, that's. Yeah, definitely. Yes. So you can see that bluey green color. It's also like the Christ consciousness as well. Um, it's like a bluey green color. Do with healing and energies. Mm. Mm. yeah that's got the, the same color as well uh with the more of a greeny but it's also going into blue and that's to do with balance and harmony in the heart chakra at the same time uh, uh, a lot of golden light on top of a head almost 
almost like a star crown on there. Now, this is very similar to the other one, but she's actually evolved from her, if you understand that. Yep. Uh, um, and this is the process that we're all, is to do with evolution, enlightenment and evolution, working with all the different energies that we have. Uh, we have so much of our, our brain, if you like, that we're not uh, using or working with um, that, that can be triggered and we are so powerful that we can do all those magical things that we can think of, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because I've always said in the past, I can't draw even smiley faces. <laughs> but I stopped saying that now and I'm just, I'm in Dublin mood. So, um, but I, I think I got some pastels somewhere. I'll have to have a look to have, um, start trying with some pastels as well, just experimenting. Yes. So it, it, I'm sure that, I mean, going into a group or some kind would be great for you too. And mm. But it, yeah, just, just to try it for yourself. Um, you, you know, when I was younger, I did have a look in magazines. And, you know, when I was about 14, 15, I, I used to copy uh, pictures out of the magazine and things like that. But these ones I've got here, none of them are copied from anything. What I did, I researched each um, each goddess to do in relation to their culture um, and then I'll just let go I went into a meditation because I really really believe in meditation meditation is a tool that separates us it's like changing gear separates us from our preconceived ideas of what things should be and coming into what they really are and coming from a deep soul sense and so I go into meditation and then I just I draw what I feel using the colors and I've already got the information about on a, um, a mental level about their culture as well now this is an Aboriginal lady mm. from the Northern Territory when I was there doing a psychic expo a couple of years ago with Connie and I took a photograph of her and I forgot to get a name anyway I came home this is a big painting again it, it's also sold and I did a, 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 a portrait of her. Of course, I, I've put in the leaves and everything like that. She didn't have that. And her hair wasn't blowing around either. So, but uh, that was her face, yeah. Mm. And then, yeah, no, the colours are stunning. And this is very bright as well. So now this is actually a antelope, I think antelope uh, skull. Is that what they call her? Uh, a lady had, uh, she got them from America, an antelope um, skull, and she brought it into me, a great big, a big skull it was, and she said, my husband wants you to draw this on here, you know, a, an Indian chief. So uh, it was very hard because they were, it's all bumpy, you know, <laughs> and uh, the colour was sinking in, so it's not all easy. But I just saw, when I looked at it, I could see a picture and I just started to draw that picture on there as well. So, yeah, so I made a painting out of it. Yeah, mm. yeah so th I've also got like, um, uh, I believe it, we should all meditate every single day or just go into a very, very quiet, just a, a quiet moment, if you like, um, just by deep, breathing maybe for two or three minutes it actually recharges our battery and opens up ourselves a lot mm. I, I did this many many years ago probably 30 years ago but i'm that old i <laughs> have many years <laughs> behind me so i love him he, and i did sell this i've sold that drum uh well i didn't sell the drum i've sold the painting on the drum uh to this person and it's uh, the wolf and you know i love that wolf I, that was lovely so i've done lots of wolves of course yes i did this one it's, it's great too it's uh the, you can see through him you know mm -hmm. so and i like that that way that the wolf is in more than one dimension it's on the earth but it's also in spirit it's also like to do with the dog star uh, which is this uh, um the syrian energy yeah the orion constellation uh, so you can see, I, I love all the moons. You can see the, the moons and the the um, planets that are there that are connecting both the this world and the other world as well. 
there's so much more out there so much more out there than what there is here but anyway we have to get our act together on earth first before we can do anything out there <laughs> definitely definitely i like these swirls i the swirls on the fur coat of the wolf oh oh yes yes and there is birds you can see the birds there um and the birds are flying so again this is all part of uh, 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 symbology as well the, the, the birds are moving towards and they're moving toward together so it's like people of like nature moving together in some some form and the, the wolf is like to do with the dog the dog as well which is to do with learning as well the wolf is uh, a protector but also to do with knowledge as well and learning and these are good to hang up. I've done quite a few of these. I've got some of those um, as well at the moment that I have to, yeah. So what is that on? Is that a drum or is No, it that is, it's a shield. Right. It's, it's actually, it's a, it's a, um, it's like a skin, but I'd say it's, it, it's like a skin material, but I'd say it's probably somewhere, it's like a, a material with, a coating on the back of it mm. so it's like a canvas but it's uh thicker than a canvas that i'm painting on so i have to first of all put a background on it to seal it uh, and then paint over the top of that as well so yeah i, I like doing these things i like them again a lot of blues here and yeah. uh <laughs> so she's got a lot of birds around her and she's also got the um like an antelope i'd say around her neck as well so this is a symbol that's there yeah and feathers that are there and she's got the full moon and on either side there are birds that you mm -hmm. can only see sort of part of the wings of that but um in the whole picture the, the birds are there as well mm -hmm. uh yeah now some of these are prints of my original work and uh, this may be one of my original pieces, but I do make prints of the all of these anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you do them in? Um, because you know we were talking about Francie earlier. Well, she did me big drawings, but she also sent me little ones with you know with the channeled message inside. So. Oh, um, okay. So, do you do any cards that size for people, or for your or for yourself as a selling point? I haven't done that. I, I've made them in A4 sizes, and I sell them in, on. And I put a put them. In, um, I've got one here, and I don't know if it's any good showing me here. But what I've done, I put a. It's like a, a thicker uh, cardboard on the back, and I put stick the painting on top of that, so it can be posted, and it doesn't have to be laminated because it's a print, and you can. I can put something on the back if they want to hang it up as well. But that's usually how I, like A3 size, so they are, A3 yeah. that, that I sell. Yeah. So, but you haven't thought of doing them like little card size? Like, um, I haven't, no, no, no. I've only done the, you know, the, the deck of cards that, that haven't been finished, that's all. Yeah, yeah so when do you you're going to bring those different. out then? Oh, sorry? When do you think you're going to bring your cards? And I believe you're. Oh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for to find somewhere I can get them um, uh, reproduced. You know, um, so this is a problem I have at the moment. Uh, it's all ready. It's all, all digitally all there. I've got a lady that's um, looking after them and that um, wanting to. Um, I have to get in touch with her. Find out. Since COVID, everything's changed, you know, so to get back yeah. to her and see what's happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So people have already ordered them. I haven't even finished them yet. Though. <laughs> haven't got them ready yet. <laughs> oh, not yeah. in time for Christmas then. Sorry? Not in time for Christmas. Oh, I wish. I wish, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would be great. That would be great. So, um and I have to have some money behind me as well to do that. Uh, and I probably can arrange that. But uh, 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 that would be great to have them ready for Christmas. Yeah, for Christmas at least. Yeah. yeah. 
So tell us uh, about that beautiful painting behind you a moment, because I know I've already asked you, but you know, she's oh, there. Okay. Right? This is, um, she's again, it's a goddess. Uh, you can see, oh, she's got, uh, you can see a little bit in there. Uh, blue. Uh, behind the, I'll, I can get her out, but she's got, just a moment, see if I can put that there. And you might be able to see a little bit more if I move it. Oh, no. Oh, don't worry. I mean, the face. Okay. Okay. So it's just that painting. I don't know if you can see that there. But mm. you can probably see the gold. It's got gold around her head, and which is in metallic gold. So, And she's got the butterflies that right. oh. uh, coming up coming up from her hand as the butterflies, which is releasing energy uh, as well so yeah mm, and beautiful she's, yeah she's a lovely energy i'll put that down there so i've had a lot of people commenting on that uh, as well so yeah is that one that you've done for somebody or is that part of your goddess print range or uh no i just like painting so i just like painting it so i just painted it so it it, it is for sale <laughs> at the same time so it's it's actually on canvas paint on canvas that one yeah the canvas uh painting so i've got a few canvas paintings here that i i, I haven't sort of uh put up there but uh, um uh, I need to. I used to exhibit a lot of my work, and I used to sell them all at exhibitions when in my twenties. So um, it's a little bit different now. So mm. with everything happening. Uh, so, so yeah. when so, so just say I come to you for um, a session or a drawing. So what do you do? You you sit quiet and you close your eyes, and then then you you mentioned you did like a scribble first. Yeah, then, but how it for you know because I mean everybody does it differently, so it's always interesting yeah. how different people do it. How they start off. Well, that's right. I mean, when I first started, I I didn't know anybody else did it. I just started doing it, and then I was surprised that Julie Julie Keith from Brisbane um, uh, was doing what I was doing at Spirit Guide Drawings. I I didn't know that was going back a long while, and I, the way I work was. I would be doing a reading because I did psychic readings. I would be doing a reading for the person. And as I'm talking to them, uh, I would start to draw. And the drawing, so I'm not focusing on the drawing. I'm allowing the drawing to come through um, on, an, on a different channel, if you like. So I've got two channels happening. And the uh, it started off, I start off with a scribble, different colours, and I see a shape or form. So I don't put in my mind that it's going to be a male or female or what kind of energy is going to come through. I allow it to be. And sometimes it looks like it's going to be a female, then it ends up being a, a male, or it might look like a male and come a, like a female. It might be quite different. And uh, I want it to surprise me so that I'm separate from it and I'm coming from a a place of clarity uh, rather than inventing something. So it, it's like I allow that to happen and and as I'm doing that, I'm talking to the person about their life or what's going to happen in the future, what things that they need to look at in themselves. And so I'm talking at the same time I'm, I'm drawing as well. So that's how I've, I've kind of worked with it. And then I talk to the person about who it is, what, what they're there in their life for, how they can help um that person whether it's a protector or a healer or whether it's someone that's going to um give them love or, or you know learn something from them um uh, somebody that might be guiding them through a particular challenge in life um and what their name is as well because before when i started and, and i used to draw my own guides i didn't know who they were and they came to me and said, you need to have a name. And I remember that and thought, oh, because I, I didn't need a name. But they said, you need to have a name. And so they gave me a name. And then this is interesting. I had, um, uh, I was in my 20s at the time and I um, did a drawing of a native. And I thought, oh, you know, I like natives. So, I mean, I, I had a drum 
sort of about 40 years ago, I had my own drum and uh, as well. And I, I had my own teepee and I, I've worked with real Indians as, as well um, in that time. And so after I did the drawing, somebody gave me an envelope with a message on it. And what they did, they wrote the message on one of the old envelopes. Um, and I turned the, the envelope over and it had a name on the back of it, Shoana, S-H-O-A-N-A. -A. And I thought, what's that about? And they said, oh, I don't know. So I ha looked it up and it's a, a name of a, a, a native native name. I was like, oh, my God, that's the name of, of my of the Indian I drew. So mm -hmm. that's how I started doing that. So, um, and now it's like I, I kind of uh, sometimes I write and it comes out a particular word or I have a feeling of it. So sometimes it comes in different ways. So I'm not – I don't draw what I see because people ask me that. Uh I'm not seeing anything, I just draw. And that's my way of working with someone as I'm doing the reading. But obviously, sometimes um, uh, sometimes I can see a picture in my mind. I don't usually paint from that. Yeah, I, I just, I just, my, it, it's not like someone guides my hand, but intuitively I just feel like I need to do it in a particular way. If I've and use the different colors in a particular way and i think oh there's something that's got to go there and i don't know what it is so you know um like in in jeff's one he he was so like open with what he did you know and um uh brought through what was actually there on the page which is just just really great and it, it would mean that it's very strong and symbolic for him so i tried to, to talk to people about what i'm seeing on the drawing after I've completed it. Yeah, yeah. It, it usually takes about about an hour if, with the reading and the the drawing session. Usually, mm. yeah. Mm, fabulous. Um, yeah. So so okay. So did, you've actually got a really a pink a pink tone, a pinky violet tone. So you've got both. It's like a a, a, a light pink violet or purple then you've got a blue and all like a little bit of blue violet as well so you've got both the masculine and the feminine energy that are working together mm -hmm. in, in this as well so and if if you counted how many circles there i'm not going to count them now but yeah. just a lot okay <laughs> but if you go to the trouble to count the circles <laughs> Um, the spirals, uh, then you know your numbers. Have a look because numbers are symbolic, and you have a look at what number it represents and what it represents for you as well at that time. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. all of these, everything in like, I've got one here where sometimes you can see, like, it's like looking in the clouds again. You see pictures, and when you look into the drawings and in looking at your own drawings, you see like little shapes and things. These are coming from the subconscious level. They're not something that you deliberately put there. So I, I can see a number of things. I can see, an, you can see an eye there, can't you? You can see that eye right across the center there. And it goes, yeah, right, like right across the whole eye, right across the center of the vortex. And um, it, 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 you can see the shape there. It's got a shape up going up on the top there too. And there's also little other little white lights that are all around. So if you have a look at what that might mean for you as well, it's like a road. I'm seeing like a road, a road of travel or where you're going. Not that you're going around in circles. So I mean, you're going, <laughs> you know, you're, you're actually gathering. It's gathering because a vortex, everything is a vortex, as you know. Energy, the cells are a vortex. Every single thing in nature is a vortex if you go right down to the minute scale. So this is a uh, gathering of energy coming together to, to form uh, a pinnacle energy in the center. It's like bringing all the energy to one center, which is the center of yourself. And also the light, you've got light on, on the way. You've got all these little things you've picked up, all the different lights and learning things, experiences that you've learned all the way through your life. It could be to do with your life or about a particular part of your life. And it goes right into the centre. And you can see a lot of light there. You can see more light in the centre. Um, then you've got right into the centre. So 
you can see an, an actual eye there with an eyeball in it as well. It's like, it, so this, I, I see this as your third eye, your intuition, your, your soul, your psychic energy, the point of who you are. This is the point of who you are. That all these lessons and learnings and travel in your life come to this point of understanding. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's really good. It's, it's like, it's very harmonious as well. Um, it's also feminine because of the circles. You could have had crisscrosses and things like that. Um, but you've got, um, it also encapsulating. What I mean is, there's a part of you that is, um, you can speak out uh, within yourself but also you protect yourself as well. You like to protect some of your energy. Mm. So, um, but you know where you're going and that you're going in a particular direction. So that that's, you know, you're quite happy by doing this on your own. You know where you go, you know what you want and you're going there. Mm. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. But it's, I've sort of really enjoyed just going round and round. No, not do it spiraling not rounding round but sort of you know and then i sort of get another brush and have a double and think oh no i'll try it with another brush so just playing really so i've, I've been really yeah. enjoying playing these last few days yeah and, and, and that's great that that's like you're working with yourself you're you're enjoying your own energy and your own being you know and, and and again it's not like you've deliberately doing it for a particular reason you're doing it from a, just a natural a form yeah. of play i mean play music play art is all part of expression on a very much deeper level you know so um and it, i'd say this is also healing for you as well it's like a mandala uh, you know it is is a, a healing energy the, the colors yeah. you're using and the, and the motion that you're using is all healing yourself mm. as well. mm. it'd be great for us to learn these things in school oh, so, it just... <laughs> i mean it, yeah. my dad was an artist as well but he never ever showed us how to paint you know wow <laughs> is, but anyway that you know it's just yeah. But I think here I am at these later stages of life, dabbling away when, you know, a bit of extra tuition when we were younger could have made a big difference. But that's how it is, eh? Well, that that's right. My father, uh, he didn't use colours. He only used, he sketched in pencil and he did portrait of my mother. I always remember that. It just looked exactly like her, like just amazing. Um, so and he also taught me how to play the violin. He was a violinist. In an orchestra as well so um but I, I didn't carry it through to like through teenage years as you know but anyway he took the violin off me and i was very disappointed <laughs> <laughs> but um so so you know i think we, we learn what we need to learn and i was a very quiet child and there was a lot of trauma around me so i went into my art for safety and not just safety but I, I like being with myself and it was pleasant and uh, by doing what I was doing and uh, it made me feel good and it was part of healing and I mean I think all of us go through things you know all through our life as well I'm not saying that I had anything disastrous or anything but no. um, that was my form of expression as well so yeah because yeah. I know um uh the lady I met years ago, she used to say about painting with your left hand if you were right. Yeah. Hand. So, um, yeah, absolutely. It's like because um, I had a I had a fall in England and I had a very bad injury to my arm and I couldn't use it for a while. So I did everything with my left hand and I drew and it was completely different. And as you know, that we've got two sides of our body. One side can actually speak to the other side. So if you've got bad arm uh the other arm is healing that arm uh i i did a lot of work with energy and, and healing and, and massage and stuff and I, I remember when i was drawing with my left hand it was completely different it was um uh how can i say it was uh 
I don't know, it's more masculine, I think. I don't know what it was. It was very different, but it's good for us to learn how to do that. Mm. And uh, we're not necessarily meant to be to use just one hand. I, I use both. Um, I don't know which one is more dominant. I, both of my hands are dominant, so or whatever. But it's good to use the left hand because you're bringing in different energies. Your mind hasn't already got it set up like you have with your right hand. Mm. It means that you're going into uncharted waters and, and, and you're separating from your thought processes and thinking and patterns of thought uh, from mm. the past and opening up new doors. So I think it's a good idea to do that, yeah. 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 Right, we've got a few um, messages I saw from Andy, uh, Andrew Flasher. Um, right, can you explain the use of sound as well, please? Okay, well, I'm uh, I'm not working with sound, but I, I love sound. Sounds of frequencies and vibrations. Um, really, uh, we are just molecules, and each molecule has a particular sound. Everything about us is, is to do with frequencies. And uh, I listen to the meditation by uh, Sol Fergio uh, to do with frequencies, uh, sound and frequencies of the, the heart chakra, the 5 to 8 hertz, and you have different hertz, different frequencies that affect us in different ways. So if if you want to, to go to sleep, obviously you're going to have it like a like a lullaby or something. So it affects us in different ways. But it doesn't have to be a theme song or a song or a lyric. It can be just a particular vibration, a sound. And some of these sounds, like, you know, in ancient times, the... Uh, the monks use sound like their voice, um, very, very deep. So it's like it's a tuning in sound. And sound uh, help us to trigger frequencies in our body uh, that will help us to tune in to a, a deeper part of ourself. And we can work with, um, I actually had a, a sound machine, actually. Uh, a frequent, it had different frequencies in it. By using certain frequencies and sounds, you can become more creative or more focused, or more intuitive, or for healing, or um, many, many different things. So we can use meditation, and you can go on YouTube, of course, and, and have a look at the meditations that they have there with different uh, frequencies and mm -hmm. vibrations. And if you have, uh, if you want to heal a part of your body, the frequency will work with that as well. But you can l work with your intuition to find what frequency is working with that particular imbalance you have in yourself mm -hmm. right was there something else you said about palladian oh yeah how many people's guides of palladian well that's a, that's an open ended question oh. <laughs> well that, that's very interesting um there are quite a few people that have connections with the arcturians palladians syrian energy um and and uh other ones that are there uh, also a lot of natives energies as well uh there are angels uh, i see angels as star beings or, or they don't exist on the earth they come to visit the earth i just see them as beings from the stars as well from, from other dimension and uh, uh so these are all interdimensional dimensional beings and we are dimensional beings so we connect with them and we we can vibrate with these dimensional beings and so there, there are quite a few beings that um, from the Pleiades that have been drawn, yes. I think it's really referring to all the different drawings have you got, what would be the proportion of Pleiadians? I think that's the question. Oh, okay. So in, in those drawings that I have that's been displayed, is that what you're talking about, Jeff? No, the people that you've come to do their drawings. Say if you've done yeah. a thousand drawings, would you have yeah. done that? Would you done five hundred? No, no. It probably it pro would probably be maybe a quarter. Right. So I'd say, but a lot of them are also to do with natives and angels. Uh, a lot of them also are masters as well, uh, teachers um, um, that can come through. So yes, it would probably be. I would say maybe a quarter. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <clears throat> All right, so, so um, for a start, for people that haven't even 
dabbled or played with anything what would you say get um a drawing pad or a, a sketch pad and what would yeah what, what i suggest is put music on mm -hmm. music is part of 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 the frequency um so if you're putting rock and roll on or, or heavy metal then you might bring something out like that <laughs> uh you, you can you know put some music on that that you like that and i always suggest um to meditate beforehand now uh, just to go into a quiet space so that you separate yourself from all the preconceived ideas that oh i can't do it i'm not good enough i'm not an artist i can't do what you did you know we have to separate from that and being positive thought remember the, our thought triggers our atoms in our body to create the reality so we say i can do this and what i do is going to be great so there's no see no such thing as good or bad when you do something just remember you're not selling this piece of work or you might uh, but it, it it does it means that there's no mistakes uh, whatever that you do is meaningful and then to, to say great this is great what does this really mean for me and have a look at it you've got the left side that is to do with the unconscious the right side which is to do with the conscious the at the top is the spirit the bottom is the grounding so you just have a look at things like that as well if if, if you want to do it and what colors you use you know every color has a particular energy black is not a color black is like a hole or a block so it's like fear or, or doubt or you know something that, that is not you um so you just have a look at those things as well so th this is um egyptian um uh, Hera, and she has all the colors of the chakras coming down but all of them are vibrating at a white light so it's bringing all the colors of the chakra into the white so white contains all the colors of course and uh, black contains none of them and uh, so it's working with the chakra energy so so you know you don't have to draw a person you can do a flower or even a pattern and uh, I, I remember if you can doodle I remember the old days when they had a phone and you had to sit at the phone because uh, it had a cord on it uh, in those days. And um, I used to have a pencil and I used to, to do a doodle. And when I finished the conversation, I had a look at the picture I did and it was about as big as a stamp. And when I turned it, it was upside down. I turned it around the other way and it was a, a drawing of Archangel Michael, a big angel with all the wings so I drew a big, bigger picture of him. So mm -hmm. obviously, you know, you might not draw Archangel Michael, but you might draw something, uh, a fish or a bird or something that looks like that, that represents that energy. Mm -hmm. But if you yeah, go so, back to the chakra one, Jeff, can you go back to the chakra one? Um, what I was going to ask is like all the lines that you've got all around, how did you get them? Hang on, wait till we get them. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Now, what i've done yeah i have drawn this picture okay I painted it painted not pastel and then i have taken a photograph of it as a and then put it on my computer and i've used um a, a digital um uh a, a, a digitally i've put those uh star lines around it the radiation lines yeah. around yeah. it and the white light yeah so all of that is done uh digitally right so yeah. if you have a look at some of my cards um there a lot of them i've, I've after i've painted them i've uh, taken a photograph and uh i've i've used a, a program where you can do that so i've only can only use the the light the light energy and the radiation of the light mm -hmm. you Brilliant. Know? yeah yeah so that's something new that i just, just learned not long yeah. ago <laughs> yeah so what's the biggest size picture that you've done then um well the biggest size the ones are like i've got here that, that one that i showed you a moment ago they're, they're big paintings i've got some of those big paintings for sale and the ones i do for people are a3 size but just mm. because it's easier to handle they can put it on a wall um yeah. it's easy to post 
because uh, I, I do post them as well. If they want a backing on it, I can do it that, that way. I, could, I take a, a photograph of it and, uh, and then I put it on a board and I can post it that way too if they don't want to laminate it. So, yeah. So all these pictures on your website, because we haven't got your website details, have we, I don't think? No. I, no, I, I didn't keep it going. All no, right, so they all on Facebook. If he, if he uh, yes, yes, I need to update my a little bit more. But, yes, um, they can have a look on Facebook as to if they want one, like what picture, some of them have got names on them or... And I can um, post one of those out them, to them as well. Mm, okay. So I would, if I'm going to post that out, I'll post also information about what it represents, the picture it represents. Mm. Mm. Right. Well, I don't think I've got any more questions. So that's absolutely fantastic. I've really enjoyed, and especially seeing all the colours, and um, yeah, because obviously I work with colour, and like I said, yeah. they're, they're linked. So like Aries is red and then you um then like taurus is orangey yellow and and you know it goes on so it's interesting when i was looking at some of your pictures uh, you know i was thinking oh that's that's the color of that note sort of thing so um but yeah they're all they're all very beautiful so thank you for sharing all your pictures and your expertise and giving us some hints and tips so okay I yeah. even double with the left hand to see absolutely yeah see try it out yeah <laughs> and, and thank you for having me it's been wonderful thank oh, you my pleasure thank Great. you very much okay